Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us in the inaugural talk of Expanded Realities Conversations. I'm Sin from Art Science Museum in Singapore. Expanded Realities Conversations is our new marquee program that connects with trailblazers in art and technology who are sculpting the possibilities of immersive media and extended reality technologies. This series of talks unfolds alongside exhibitions and projects presented at Art Science Museum in our 10th anniversary year, featuring artists, technologists, and storytellers around the world who are creating at the frontier of the digital future and their groundbreaking projects. Today's opening talk in the Expanded Realities Conversations program explores how video games are evolving beyond the screen and introducing new encounters that connect virtual and physical worlds in extraordinary ways. We're delighted to be organizing this in conjunction with the international premiere of Virtual Realms, Video Games Transformed at Art Science Museum to feature the wonderful curatorial voices behind the exhibition. Patrick Moran, acting co-head and associate direct curator at Barbican International Enterprises and celebrated video game designer and founder and CEO of Enhance, Tetya Mizuguchi. Patrick Moran oversees the Barbican International Enterprises Touring Exhibition Program, and he collaborates with artists, designers, museums, and art centers worldwide on exhibitions to showcase popular culture and digital creativity to international audiences. Apart from virtual realms, Patrick's curatorial projects also include Manga Isaiah, Wonderlands of Asian Comics, and Game On. Tetsuya Mizuguchi creates um, highly unique experiences that challenge and engage the human sensory, evidenced by seminal games such as Res, Luminous, Child of Eden, and Tetris Effect. At the core of his work is synesthesia and activating one's imagination and feelings through the power of technology-driven interactive arts. In addition to heading in Hans, Mizuguchi-san is the principal of the Synesthesia Lab, and he also serves as a project professor at Keio University Graduate School of Media Design in Japan. Mizuguchi-san and Patrick will highlight the exciting work of the video game developers, media artists, and design studios featured in virtual realms, and talk about how the interactive, immersive experiences in the exhibition showcase the infinite potential of video games as a contemporary artistic medium. In just a moment, we will be starting with the talk by Patrick and Mizuguchi-san, then moving into a Q&A hosted by Patrick where they will be taking questions from the floor. So please do share your comments, thoughts and questions with us um, throughout the session today in the live chat, whether you are joining us from Facebook or YouTube. It gives me great pleasure now welcoming Tetsuya Mizuguchi and Patrick Moran to today's program. Hi Zen, thank you for that lovely intro. And thank you also Tetsuya Mizuguchi for, for joining us tonight to, to talk about this exhibition we created together. Um, so very briefly, just to introduce the concept of, of virtual realms, um, video games transformed. This is a, a brand new exhibition as, which is having its world premiere here at the Art Science Museum in Singapore. And it's a collaboration between the Barbican Centre in London, uh, the Art Science Museum here in Singapore and the Melbourne Museum. And Virtual Realms is really a, a, a new project which challenges and reimagines video games in the in a gallery context. So we have selected six video game designers who work in collaboration with media art studios to create brand new, immersive, expansive reinterpretations of uh, some of their sort of key video games from their um, recent recent works, and we we take those projects and totally reimagine them for for a new audience, for a communal audience, for uh, collaborative interaction, and giving them a, a new a new set of tools, uh, a, a new. A palette to work with um, away from the console and the the sort of narrower um, computer single computer single player experience. So this is a an idea which um, a, a concept a, a, a challenge which myself and Mizuguchi San put to video game designers. Um, we started this project over three years ago in collaboration with our our venue partners. 
Um, and tonight we want to just talk you through the, the six projects which, which make up this exhibition and uh, introduce the thematic curatorial vision which uh, draws these six very unique, very, very different works together to tell a story about the, the contemporary and the future of, of, of video games. So uh, Mizuguchi-san, I think before we go into the exhibition itself, it would be really great for visitors, um, sorry, viewers, to see some of your past projects to give some content and context to how we sort of developed this project. So maybe if you could introduce some of your, your previous works, starting perhaps with, with Res Infinite. Okay, Patrick, thank you. Um, so um, we enhance uh, headquartered in California, USA, and uh, with a research and a development in Tokyo. And uh, we have a R&D team uh, in yeah, Tokyo and the worldwide. And uh, we have 40 people working on designing synesthetic uh, experiences. So we're doing the video game, media art, and uh, the other project, and uh, yeah, including VR, AR, XR technologies. And uh, here is the, uh, the, the, the video game we published in 2016 called Res Infinite. So it's uh, an updated version of the Res I produced in 2001 and uh, with new elements and uh, uh, updated experience using the latest uh, Unreal Engine 4 and the VR technologies. So in this world, sound effects, sound effects become the music and the music interact with the visuals and the tactile sensations from the controller to create a synesthetic uh, adventure. And Res is the inspiration, um, well, it's really considered your first synesthetic project which is a um, kind of key to your future projects, which we'll look at, and also for your commission in this exhibition. Yeah. So, uh, so for my uh, commission called the Shinnish Teacher, I will introduce later but the Resident Infinite. That was a key of the creative inspiration. And uh, we uh, crystallized that mechanism of res and uh, we collaborated with uh, Rhizomatix uh, people. Yeah, and uh, you know, they made uh, the new experiential challenges. So uh, this is a Tetris effect. Uh, the game, uh, the, that was uh, that we announced in uh, nine, uh, 2019 and uh, Tetris is a game that many people knows and uh, you know many people played all over the world and um, <clears throat> the Tetris has a long history and a great game IP so but it was a challenge to update uh, this title into a new synesthetic experience with the latest VR technology like Razer Infinite. So in this game, the players control, uh, create music and create a harmony that include visuals and haptic sensations also. So this title has been played by nearly uh, 2 million users worldwide now, including PS4, PSVR, PC, and Oculus Quest, and the Xbox Series X and the X and the Series S. And there's a, a second version as well, isn't there? Um, connected. Yeah, so connected. Uh, so yeah, the, the hot news is Tetris Effect connected. It's a, the, it's the version like, you know, you can play each other and uh, that is, you know, connected Tetris Effect. And uh, we will uh, start the beta testing for cross-platform play soon. Uh, we'll start June 24. 
maybe next week. So yeah, everybody can play together from the other, you know, different type of platforms. So this is a big challenge. Yeah, please join us. Yeah. And there's there's the connection of between these two games that they're both exemplify this unique experience of having a synesthetic play that the, you as a gamer have like a heightened visual, sensual, uh, sensorial kind of um, condition when playing these games. Yeah, yeah. So we can say, you know, uh, the player can go into deeper kind of a zone with sound and the music and uh, yeah, also the haptics. So this is uh, the last video I'm going to show you is Synesthesia X1 2.44. Uh, synesthesia, we can say device and or machine that contains 44 actuators. And when you put yourself into it, the sound vibration and the lights envelop your entire body and your internal image that you had becomes art itself. <laughs> so this is not an interactive experience, but we are doing various experiments to see what kind of emotions can be uh, generated when you when the whole body is involved in synesthesia. The activity is being organized by Synesthesia Lab, uh, which conduct re research on synesthesia in addition to enhance the law includes uh, flu plateau. This is a formerly rhizomatics design and the sound artist Ebara. And working with musicians is key across all of these projects as well, like the the composers for, for Res Infinite, for, um, for Tetris Effect, for the X1, and also um, for the, the project we're about to talk about, uh, Resonance as well. The, the, the music is always very iconic and yeah, you, you, it's really key that you work with composers who understand this, this, the effect you're trying to create this synesthesia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we has have teamed up with uh, Rhizomatics in Japan to create an interactive synesthesia installation called Resonance. So next slide, please. Yeah, so the four people can have uh, the device code sphere, including the haptic device. And uh, so this is kind of an art piece based on the Res Infinite that I mentioned earlier. So when, in which our four, four participants can move their own spheres freely in the space and uh, resonating with each other's past, past, you know, each other's beats and the visual and the haptics. So next slide, please. So if they were playing together, um, it's getting the resonance, you know, uh, with audio visual haptic. In other words, the work uh, extract the game mechanism of res and crystallizes them into a completely new experiential artwork. So, yeah. So the essence of red, essence is res coming from res. So, but totally new experiential art, interactive art. Yeah. And I feel that, um, yeah, this kind of essence is really uh, key key to this exhibition, these themes, which we talk about, which we'll go on to talk about for each each of the different commissions. But um, as a, a sort of fan player of Res myself, that that kind of core of the experience is so present in the space when you have this, these spheres here you can see, which uh, respond with light and, and vibration and they sculpt the sound as you move around the space that it, it really evokes that um, that experience of, of, of playing that game, that and it's a very unique experience in in video games. Um, and it's quite a yeah, quite a special experience that you can do this collaboratively with four people and 
craft this piece of music and um, interact and respond to the visuals in the space. And it, it's very performative as well. You're, you're really becoming a dancer in this space as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so watch, yeah, it's a fun to play and the fun to watch the people playing together. Yeah, so this is like a game mechanism also, you know, um, yeah, it's the same. And shall we move on to our, our next realm into? Okay. Uh, so, okay, so I want to introduce uh, about the, uh, the, the, the concept. This is a, the Unity realm. So this world is an independent video game studio led by Jenova Chan, who continues to create amazing games, such as Flow, Flower, Journey, Sky, and they are teamed up with uh, Field IO, uh, London-based media designers. And this is a Unity that uses a sound and light that feels in the world of the sky. So, yeah, Patrick, please explain Unity to everyone. <laughs> uh, could we get the next slide, please? So the the concept of Unity is that our next big thematic. Um, uh, after synesthesia, and this speaks to how uh, video games create sent these communities, these strong bonds between players um, who collaborate together through play, through these in, in interactive artworks such as Sky Children of the Light, which was really the inspiration for, for this commission. And if we just move on to the next slide, we can maybe show a little bit more of the work. So. Uh, it looks very, very different to uh, a screenshot of uh, that game company game, but it really, at its core, is this like the same experience as we were talking about with um, with, with Res and, and, and Resonance. The, this uh, sculpture which you see here is uh, kind of like an interactive musical instrument. It responds to the audience's presence as they as they step underneath it, and as you move from one ring to another, it creates different sounds and you start to create this really beautiful composition um, depending on the number of people in the space and their locations. Um, but as, as the piece progresses, if you manage to illuminate an entire ring, then it will celebrate this um, moment of unity, this collaborative effort by playing a very rousing piece of, of music, which acknowledges the sort of communal effort that the this audience have put together um, to uh, in, in this space, this uh, collaboration of people who maybe not, don't know each other, but for this small moment, they've um, created something through their collective efforts. And it's a it really speaks to how that game company try to, you know, take this kind of progression in a video game from your first encounter with a game and it's a kind of a, a mode of discovery to the moment of uh, like the ending where you've as a as a group you have completed a task and you have this sort of sense of unity of, of togetherness and so that's really the the core of the work even though it's very abstracted into this light sculpture which really speaks to what feel.io do which is create these very minimal, very beautiful um, pieces of, of, of design and interaction, which have these deep, powerful emotional connections. So there's a really nice kind of uh, balance between these two teams and how they could kind of understand each other's work, even though it's, they come from very, very different worlds and have very, very different audiences. But through this uh, collaboration, through this uh, commission, they created something something very, very unique and uh, uh, totally different to what we saw earlier with the with the Resonance Commission, which is the interaction is very, um, you know, very, very, very active. You need to be moving the sphere, responding to the visuals. It's, it's closer to uh, dancing, as we said, it's very performative. And this piece is much more about relating to the space and relating to, to people. Um, yeah, so I, th I think we mm. we should move on to our, our next piece, if you could bring the next slide. Yeah, that is a, yeah. so the next realm is narrative. Uh, 
So the where Madrid-based tequila works, uh, creators of such as uh, Deadlight and Rhyme, with beautiful narrative, have teamed up with London-based uh, the workers to create a new narrative of experience. So Patrick, please. Yes, yeah, so as um, Mr. Gucci san was saying, that storytelling is so important in contemporary video games. And so this is a thematic we really wanted to highlight in this exhibition if we're celebrating contemporary video game design and the audiences which, in, which enjoy video games. And so we wanted um, to celebrate not just stories in games, but how video games are a unique way to tell stories because they are potentially interactive or or, or non-linear. And so you can do lots of different things with narrative, which you can't do in say uh, literature or, or cinema. So uh, the team um, at Tequila Works were really interesting for us because they've done story-driven works in, in virtual reality. They've done a sequel to Groundhog Day, um, but they've also done a sort of a adventure game, a really, really beautiful adventure game called Rhyme, which tells a very unique story, a very powerful story. Um, if we just move on to the next slide, perhaps. Yeah, here's a, a really beautiful shot of it. Um, so the initial premise is of a, sort of a, a classic adventure of a, a boy marooned on a on a mysterious island, and it's a very Mediterranean in theme, which speaks to the heritage of the, the team in Madrid who made this game. Um, but as the story progresses, as well as you progress through through the different levels and you explore the island, the story becomes much much more than just a, a voyage of discovery and adventure. It's you sort of reveal this sort of the relationship between the boy and members of his family. And there's a much more powerful story about loss sort of built in built into the game. And we really wanted to celebrate this type of storytelling where in rhyme they don't use any text or dialogue. It's all done through the spatial design, through the cinematography, through the animation, uh, through the interactions. And yeah, we we really wanted to um, try and reimagine this for because it's such a game way of telling stories. We really wanted to try and find a way to reimagine this into a, a gallery. Um, so if we just move to the to the next slide. So you can see a small section of it here, but the actual commission is a huge 360 degree uh, panoramic scene of the world of Rhyme. Well, in fact, it's several scenes from Rhyme. Um, so each one is interactive. You can step into these lights and trigger different moments in the scene. And uh, this commission, we entitled it Book of Sand, and that is, um, in reference to the Jorge Borges uh, short story of the same name, which is about an infinite story, uh, a book, a fictitious book, which has no beginning and, and no end. So we wanted to create a sort of infinite story space within the world of rhyme. So within this panoramic space, which you can interact with, you'll, um, depending on when you enter the space, you'll trigger different events. You'll see different things in the space and you'll have a different version of, of this in the story of this installation, like what, what adventure you as an audience went on when you when you visited this, this space. And it's just such a, a celebration of the, the commission of the, of, sorry, of the game of, of Rhyme. Um, and I think of, as you'll see, I, I'm sure Mr. Gucci Sam will agree, this is the most sort of video game looking of our commissions, this one, the, the gameplay and the well, the interaction, which is really like gameplay, um, and also having the visuals are sort of it's it's really is remapping rhyme into a, a big ten meter cylinder. Hmm. Okay, shall we move to the next? Yeah. Okay, so this is a realm of play. So media molecule. Uh, the British studio that brought to you Big Planet, uh, little, little Big Planet, and 
Dream has teamed up with London's uh, Marshmallow Laser Feast to create a, a new physical happy experience. Yeah, that's so, right. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so the, the theme of play is probably the most obvious of these big thematics, which celebrate contemporary video game design and, um, and audiences because play is such a key part of what makes any video game. And there's very few video games you don't have a play element to them. Uh, so Media Molecule, which um, I'm sure many, many people know, they, they don't just make games which are fun to play. They're also big, very usable tool sets to create your own games, your own experiences. And this is such an incredible sort of uh, dynamic where the, the video game developer give their audience the ability to create uh, their own games. And the key sort of project for, for this commission is their latest game, Dreams, which is a tool set which you can really create any form of digital um, digital creativity. You can make music, you can make video games, you can make 3D objects, um, you can make short films. It's a very, very powerful and very varied tool set. And this whole commission, which we'll talk about in a second, the uh, dream shaping was actually created in that piece of software on a PlayStation 4 using a PlayStation 4 controller. But they collaborate with uh, Marshmallow Laser Feast, who are uh, a studio of uh, media designers in, in the UK as well, who are very interested in the sort of physicality and tactility of the digital. So making virtual reality feel more present in, in reality, so to speak. Um, so they've done projects where you can see your own breath in virtual reality. They've, they've cited VR works in forests. So you get a sense of nature around you when you're experiencing uh, VR. So the very, very unique teams. If we just move on to the next slide, we can talk about the actual experience. Um, yeah, so maybe go on to the next slide so you can actually see the interaction. I think it might be easier. <laughs> so, uh, Miss, do you want to describe the interaction a little bit, a, bit, a little bit of the experience of play? So up to five people uh, can hold that um, that object, <laughs> including uh, with sensors. And uh, so people wearing the, the helmet with also the sensor. And uh, people can interact with the big screen and uh, play with um, the interaction, the visual interaction, and uh, many things, many missions, small missions, and uh, you have to do something. And uh, up to 10 people can join together. Yeah, with, even if they're without the objects, but people screaming and <laughs> laughing and uh, super smiley and happy. Uh, yeah, happy atmosphere. Yeah, this is also, you know, the game aspects. Yeah, that is an incredible, yeah, commission. Yeah, mm. I think talking about the core of people's works and like this really gets across um, a lot of what Marshmallow Laser Feast and Media Molecule want to do, which is to create these extremely joyful encounters with with mm. the digital and make it very very intuitive um this is obviously the objects are kind of like something you would see in a playground and that's what they want to celebrate this is you know it's an artwork but it's very very approachable and and is meant to encourage a sort of childlike sensibility a playful sensibility mm. um yeah. in when when you encounter it and yeah it's very hard not to um be you know very vocal and, and move and like very energetic when you're kind of in the space and moving these objects around and seeing how they respond to the virtual world but also the people around you you know um you have to be aware of both the kind of the virtual and the physical at the same time which is what's so interesting about this commission you're not 
uh, transmitting your attention to one space, you are sort of present in both at, at, at the same time. Yeah, I love physical involvement. That that is also you know the super fun experience. Yeah, yeah, it's it's and it's tonally so different to some of you know this work is almost like a, a, a workout. It's very very energetic. But then some of the other works, we have a very, very different tone and very different uh, feeling and sensibility when you're in, in, in the spaces. Uh, thinking back to unity and creating the sense of togetherness, it's, it's a, 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 a calmness and a thoughtfulness, which is the mm -hmm. polar opposite of, of this commission. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have two more themes. So the next is everything. So uh, David O'Leary, uh, the visual artist who was involved in uh, film, Ha, and also the, he's a, the video game artist. So he teamed up with uh, London-based uh, 1.0 to create an interactive experience based on the title of his masterpiece, Everything. Yeah. OK, next slide. Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. <laughs> so this is probably a little confusing for everybody because we've named the the theme for this area is the same as the game, which is inspiration. But although it, it's a little confusing, we just feel it was, it was so the right uh, title for this concept. So the the concept behind the the this area of everything is that to celebrate and speak to how video games um, are this incredible way that we can create whole universes, com complete holistic spaces um, digitally, which people can explore and create in. And there's really no end to that what people can do. Um, examples being things like Minecraft or EVE Online, these epic expansive uses of um, the, the sort of digital universe um but those are fantastic examples but we selected david o'reilly's everything as the the work to base this um commission on because it's such a poetic and beautiful um exploration of this idea that in the game everything rather than the thematic title you know david gives players the ability to embody any object in um in the universe, you can explore being an amoeba, a bacteria, you can then be a sunflower, or you can scale up, be an animal or a house, a building or a planet or a mountain. And just as you explore these different sort of beings, you kind of meditate on the interconnectedness and the scale of, of all of creation. And I really can't think of another way you could explore these ideas so succinctly and so beautifully as you can do in a, in a video game. Um, so working with 1.0, uh, we wanted to really reimagine this game so it could be something that people could play together and experience together. But um, yeah, so if you move on to the, to the next slide. So, uh what we did is we've taken all of those objects which make up the game everything i think there's over five thousand of them and they sort of uh, are cascading through the screen they all fall through this big beautiful 4k projection screen we have in the space and then there's a lot of mirrors around the space which we use to uh, rep, like reproduce all the symmetries you see in, in that original 4K image. And as these objects fall through the screen, they they move and dance to the, the rhythms of a soundtrack uh, selected by David O'Reilly from the, the London Symphony Orchestra. So we have this really beautiful soundtrack where in fact in the simulation, the soundtrack selects categories of objects. So it's really the soundtrack which informs the visuals that you see. And then as they fall through the screen, using those sort of glowing controllers you can see on uh, the, the sort of three people in the space are, are holding onto, 
you can start to manipulate this um, these objects as they as they fall through the screen. So on one of the controllers, you can um, manipulate the the sort of the field of view, like how the objects fall, and sort of distort them back on themselves. On another, you change the scale of the objects, and on the third, we change the we add a visual kind of blurring effect. And the idea is that together um, people can sort of create their own sort of sort of visual poems these kind of beautiful moments of like responding to the objects responding to the music they can change the visuals and create this very very rich visualizer and it's not just a space to interact it's a space to you know sit back on all the sort of curved foam seating you can see um in in the space and kind of just enjoy the ambiance of this uh sort of psychedelic meditative experience of seeing all of creation with this epic soundtrack and seeing how people can manipulate and change it and this combination of the um, the objects never repeating in the same order um, to the same piece of music and people's manipulation of controllers mean the visuals are never never the same so we've when we've been trying to document this piece um, some photographers have asked for you know or oh, can we go back and see this this section this image again we say no that's it you'll never see it again that's it's so sort of infinitely generating these very very beautiful poetic um images and 1.0 uh it was really their innovation to create the space that they were the ones who envisioned the, the creating the seating these very unique very intuitive but game controllers which are nothing like a normal game controller and using these mirrors to create these these additional symmetries to make the space even more kind of immersive and and engaging. Um, shall we move on to the next realm? Yeah. So uh, finally, this is the uh, the sixth uh, theme. This is a connection, uh, Kojima Production, and an independent Japanese studio led by Hideo Kojima, teamed up with London-based uh, The Mill to tackle the theme of connection. So Kojima-san said that is a key word is also an important theme in the world of this surrounding is the game. The, the meal has tried to realize Kojima-san's concept in this way. Yeah. Yeah, there is a uh, wall. Yeah, so the... the Connection really, we really felt, spoke to Kojima-san's work because in Death Stranding, you are rebuilding, you know, you you collaborate with players indirectly from, you know, from your world to theirs to rebuild uh, a devastated United States. So if we just move on to the next slide. And so um, just as you're in Death Stranding, you're really you're the sole occupant of your world there's no other players in it directly we wanted to create these kind of well kojima-san uh wanted to create these two separate spaces um which you can interact and connect through and so he came up with this concept of a, a sort of large interactive wall um in collaboration with the mill and we if we move on to the next slide we can see a little of it so there's these two sort of big interactive touch surfaces, which um, have very, very different aesthetics and very different interactions. One is the microscopic and the, the cellular and is very organic in, in the kind of interactions you have and the, um, the elements which you can, you can engage with, these kind of cellular forms which divide and subdivide as you approach them. And then the other side is these kind of elemental particles of the, the galactic scale, uh, these, which kind of have a gravitational mass and they kind of flow and um, form sort of, um, sort of black holes uh, across the space. But the key is that this is not two entirely separate spaces, that they are connected. And that when you're present interacting on one side of the wall, your presence is projected into the other side. So. On the cellular side, you start to see these new cellular forms emerge, which are the silhouettes of the people on the galactic side. 
And on the galactic side, you see these energy silhouettes emerge of, of the people in the organic side. So it's, you can start to try and communicate very, very simply and very crudely and try and engage with people on either side of this wall. And yeah, when we were working with uh, Kojima-san on this commission, he was sort of playfully joking that we should put this commission on a on a border wall between between two peoples, between two countries, um, as well. It was a yeah. There's a lot of kind of high concepts about you know thinking about what it means to be you know trying to communicate through technology, like what we can do. Like it, it is an important thing you, which we all use technology before, it doesn't always divide us. Um, but this is a very sort of conceptual way of, of exploring it. Mm. So I think yeah. that's about as much time as we have to talk through the exhibition. I really hope um, people get to come and, come and see the exhibition, see or at least see some video of all these really, really beautiful works, um, maybe, uh, slightly better than my descriptions of them. Um, so it would be really good to, I think we can move on to some some questions from from visitors. Uh, sorry, I keep saying visitors because I'm in an exhibition space from, from viewers. <laughs> so um, maybe just as people start to draft their questions and, 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 and pass them on to us, I think, I'm, I'm always keen to ask you, uh, Miz, I'm always keen to ask you some more questions about, about the project. Um, if my lights stop, keep stop going off. Um, so we, we have six realms. We came up with these six concepts together, but there, we don't think, well, from my perspective and just to sort of share with the audience, those aren't the sort of sum total of the kind of realms of uh, experience which a modern video game uh, presents that we could have had a, a seventh or an eighth realm or we could have just had five. Um, was there some more ideas which could have been a, a seventh realm, like a, a, an extra thematic you think, which would have been really interesting to have brought to the project? Can you hear me, Mr. Gucci san hmm? So you asked me? Yeah, yeah, I was just asking you if there was a potential idea for a seventh realm, like an additional um, quality of modern video games that we could have built a commission around. Is there something else which um, we could have worked with? You said seven realms, six realms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if we had, a, if if we were to make a seventh, if we had decided on seven instead of six, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have hidden world realm, <laughs> yeah, no. an, an Easter egg, an additional realm, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, that was uh, the fun process, you know, to decide that kind of a six realms. That was a uh, you know, you and uh, I, you know, curated, co-curated, but the basically, uh, naturally, that six themes uh, happened you know, from the artists. And uh, I think this six aspects, you know, six themes uh, express um, yeah, the game itself. Mm. You know, the game has, yeah, the synesthesia and uh, connection and, uh, yeah, narrative and, uh, yeah, play. Yeah, I know everything. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's a really key point is we don't think these are exclusive thematics. So a, a game, you know, can have story and elements of connection and unity that they are. We just really wanted to sort of celebrate or emphasize designers yeah. who really 
champion one of these uh, mm. themes which we saw emerge in, in, in video games. Yeah, the, the video game also started from, you know, this is the 50 years history media of, and of, you know, the first game was black and white, no sounds, and uh, they got the sounds, we got the colors, from 2D to 3D, and we got that uh, new technology like, uh, um, um, yeah, so BR, AR, XR, and a connection. And a uh, yeah, game is all the time, game, video game is growing with technologies, uh, evolution. And uh, we got a new inspiration from new technology all the time, new creativity coming from the inspiration of technology. So, yeah, we can't deny that, you know. So, so video game is very unique, transform um, the media and the changing and the changing and the expanding. So, yeah, this is a, the big challenge for everybody, you know, this time. The game and uh, game artists, the game designers and the media artists, collaborate together it's not easy also you know we have the pandemic so uh, so many many challenges but uh you know maybe you know this is a big step and a new big one step and uh you know maybe 10 years 20 years 30 years 50 years later future looking back the history of the, the video game uh including smartphones and uh, online games. So, and uh, maybe the future, the boundary of the video game and art and entertainment will be, yeah, melting. Mm. 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 Well, so, I think yeah. that, that point kind of leads, uh, res really leads into our first question we have from Edmund Lim, who asked about artificial intelligence and deep learning, um, does it play an important role in your art of, in the art of creation and composing? Um, there's many AI-powered machines to help compose new music. Um, do Enhance use um, machines to help compose the music or AI and other elements of work? And are you so, able? So yeah, if you want to answer that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the answer is no, yet, not yet. So I don't know the future, but, mm, but <laughs> yeah, so I can't deny any possibilities. So <clears throat> yeah, it's really fun to create music, you know, by ourselves as human <laughs> and as an artist. So, but the mixing some AI elements into not composing, but um, I don't know, but creating some some atmosphere, the world, and uh, also uh, connecting with uh, the visual and uh, the other elements like you know the haptic. So, but we can, mm, yeah, I, I, yeah, totally. I don't know, but yeah. We have that kind of possibility all the time. Mm. So how can we use AI technology into for fun and the happiness of, of people, you know, players? And uh, yeah, this is a fun architecture and the happiness architecture. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Be interesting to see if yeah if AI can create synesthesia for humans like in in the future. <laughs> but um, I I believe you know that is yeah the last realm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> AI uh, that yeah yeah AI can't touch. Yeah, because it's not easy. It's really you know the complex, uh, you know complexity, you know uh, to create that emotional and the physical involvement and uh you know mm. wow factor so i think it's the uh, 
yeah, I want to believe, you know, that is the, uh, the, the last from last space and the last um, the creative. That, that's yeah, the most area. human. Yeah, space, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and well, I think that's interesting <laughs> for our next question as well with um, from Blue Tengu. Uh, so can video games now be called art? Are these experiences also games or are they something different? So are the six commissions an artwork, a video game, something else? It's, uh, it's a very difficult question and answer. Yeah, all the time, you know. I think the most video game uh, designers and artists, uh, you know, thinking about the game itself. Oh, this is a entertainment, and uh, this is a entertainment form. But we have many aspects. It's very artistic, you know, approach, artistic process and artistic um, thoughts and uh, architecture and philosophy. So, and uh, also the game is expanding. So, and uh, some people, oh, this game is art almost, you know, kind of a comment, you know, mm. we have now recently so this is uh, the you know reason the game has yeah game is still you know expanding and uh, you know connecting with the many possibilities and uh, so like uh, you know talking about the synesthesia commission you know resonance so we are using the same technology almost you know as the video game resident infinite or Tetris effect, but mm. you know we, uh, yeah, we built that experience, you know, not in the game field, outside of the game field. So, and they're using the essence of Resident Infinite, the game mechanism. So that means you know experience is getting becoming the art, one of the art art form. So the experiential art is uh, with technology is is very new thing, new thing. So yeah, what yeah, what do you think, Patrick? <laughs> I like it to be indeterminate. I don't. Um, I like video games to be their own thing, and I like the interactions between these different um these different discussions these different kind of perspectives worldviews industries um different creative perspectives i don't think everybody should be trying to put everything into one one experience one um mm. you know just saying everything everything is now equal the same i think it's interesting that there's lots of different audiences and ways that people understand and engage and value these different forms of creativity. And for me, that's what makes these conversations and these works in virtual realms and in lots of other areas that very, very interesting that, you know, we bring video games and media artists together, mm -hmm. you know, what you get really interesting collaborations between, you know, musicians and, and then, media artists or video game designers and you can i think it's good to have these different places which then can come together in contexts like virtual realms yeah um we we best ask another question rather than oh he's gone <laughs> i think that he switched some <laughs> Okay, so um, um, hi everyone. We're just waiting for Patrick to come back um on online. Um, while we have him, Mizuguchi-san. Oh, right, mm -hmm. there he is. Oh, he's back. Back to you, Patrick. <laughs> Sorry. 
sorry, my browser just crashed. <laughs> um, I'm just just trying to load up the, the questions again. Um, I'm very sorry about that, everybody. I don't know what happened there. Mm. Um, yeah, so, so I have a, a I've, we have a, um, yeah, a question. So shoot. Yeah, it's a very yeah, interesting question. So it's the same as, uh, yeah, do, you, do we think the video games will affect any new influence to the definition of contemporary arts? So, yeah, I, I want to ask you, Patrick. So this exhibition started from a very strong inspiration, right? So, you know, video game is on or not? And uh, the video game and interactive art, what the, uh, the border? And uh, I think that you had uh, the big, yeah, kind of a yeah, question and uh, some inspiration, or well, we should do this. So, yeah, tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure if you remember, um, as a good son, but I saw your um, haptic suit performance at Media Ambition Tokyo, maybe 2016. Yeah, synesthesia um, suit. Synesthesia suit, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a, a big, sort of inspiration to, for the initial idea to um, you know invite video game designers to work in gallery installations to reimagine their games into a, a, a gallery into some new context because you had done that um, is a singular experience it was a single person but it was a performance of res infinite um, and it was, you know, a very striking uh, artwork in a, in a gallery context, but also very much still a celebration of um, a video game. So that was always in my head. And then, you know, then we obviously, to give people the sort of some backstory of, of the project is I kind of wrote that very rough proposal and sent it to you and invited you to join join the project and then to start to sort of create this curatorial sort of structure, these narratives, these um, these ideas of thematics, how we could uh, invite game designers to join the project in a way that had structure and had meaning and uh, yeah, would create something which was cohesive as a, as a uh, demonstration of and celebration of, of, of video game innovation and, and creativity in audiences. Um, yeah, so that was the kind of the, the, the backstory. Um, yeah. What do you think? How we started. Yeah, yeah in the near future, uh, the video game will affect uh, the influence of contemporary to contemporary art. What do you think? in the next 10 years, 20 years, later future? Well, yeah, I think people value the experiences of video games as as, as deeply as, a, as they do with, um, with an artwork. It doesn't, there's no boundary anymore, but I think especially bringing video games into um, a museum or a, an art center, or somewhere like Art Science Museum, allows people to have a very open engagement and response to the, to the video game. They're not thinking about entertainment as much or fun. It's you can, it's a space to think more about the, the concepts and the intent and the creativity. So uh, I, I think it's all about diversifying where video games are and then they will be more experienced as much as artworks as they are as a, a distraction or entertainment or a social space and, and, and all of those things which are all great things as well. They should never stop being any of those things. You know, um, Tetris Effect is a, a beautiful um, reimagining, contemporary reimagining of, of Tetris, but then the connected version, you know, makes it social and adds, an, uh, adds another dynamic and doesn't diminish it as a, as a creative and artistic um, endeavor and reinterpretation of, of Tetris. So 
that all of these things can exist together and I, there should be no hierarchy in my opinion between the these different tensions in video games they can be all of them and that's what these thematics speak to they celebrate all of the the different dynamics which are possible in in modern video games and um we maybe ambitiously these kind of ideas we develop together we you know like to see them as framing devices for for understanding understanding games mm. um i'm sorry since my browser crashed i don't have all the questions up so i'm just gonna we've got five more minutes so we can maybe take one maybe two more questions so i'm just going to quickly um try and find one in the in the chat just give me one second uh so here's a an interesting question for you mizuguchi san so from saf ahmed um is how much of the thought processes used now for these artworks are also employed for your some of your older games like sega rally so how much would something like sega rally when you were the create the process for that game how much how similar is that to um your more recent games like tetris effect or is it a very very different way of working mm. that's a very interesting question <clears throat> um so yeah the game design and the experiential design and architecture process it's uh it's very you know complex complex and uh i learned a lot from my you know early games like a sega rally the racing game is very simple simple architecture because you know um everybody compete with time and luck like you know i want to be at the first like that and uh it's very simple basically and uh but simple but very strong very strong it's a very magnetic you know uh power it has so and the fun game and the fun experience has that kind of a very powerful magnetic factor in it and uh also the making the chemistry so if you feel fun or oh, wow you know you got a chemistry you know, call and response and the call and response and that kind of process making some chemistry and uh, oh i'm fun like that mm. and uh yeah it's, i learned that from very simple game architecture like a uh, racing game and uh so if i didn't make that kind of type of game i couldn't make resident infinite and luminous and space channel five so any type of games i think i i couldn't make that so um if i don't know you uh you, you want to be at uh, the game designer or you know uh, but if uh, it's the same the game design or interactive design is also the same some yeah very important very some concept and uh basic architecture yeah this is a human interactive design is you know um it's a, i'm a tester and i feel <laughs> good <laughs> i can find something so and uh from simple architecture you know it's getting the complex thing so uh, i needed the time and the process and i got um almost 30 years <laughs> my history my career but any moments in the every games i needed to me i think so okay we're almost out of time but i do want to ask this last question i hope i don't get into trouble for overrunning even further um but my browser crashed so i think i'm allowed extra time um so there seems to be guiding interest in making many of these experiences multiplayer when possible. 
is that driven by a desire for real life interaction by the commissioning entity? So I think that means the, the studios, or is that a design decision driven um, uh, driven by us? If the latter, why the emphasis on sharing? Uh, mm, yeah, Patrick, what do you think? <laughs> Um, well, I think it's the unique qualities of putting citing stuff in a in an exhibition space is that um, it it is inherently an, a, a public activity. You know, we're, you're going to be in a space with other people, and let's celebrate that. That's a very different type of audience and interaction for a lot of these video game designers and for a lot of these worlds. Um, so, I, I think it it is. In the when Mizuguchi san and myself were kind of writing the briefs for the artists, it was implicit that these needed to be shared experiences because that's the the most unique thing that we can offer um, here versus playing Res or Tetris Effect at home. Um, that we you, it's not just that it's in a big space, but that it's with other people. You have to relate to um, the people in the space as well as the work and also that the work, um, all of them, because they're highly interactive, you need people to uh, bring them alive to actually make the, the artwork become something. Otherwise they are quite, you know, they, they, don't, they don't respond much. They don't do much without um, a, a, an audience present. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of, I would say mm. it's implicit in our briefing. Uh, that these were shared experiences, that these were multiplayer, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah, so I can say something from my uh, my my work, you know, Res Infinite and uh, Resonance. So Res Infinite and the Res, this is a one player game and uh, you can get sound, getting the music kind of uh, experience by yourself. And uh, it's getting deeper, trancey world you can go. And uh, I love that to create that. <laughs> so, and uh, when I make, when I made Res originally, you know, I thought, oh, I don't need, you know, any multiplayer kind of uh, experience. So I want to play by myself and I want to present this experience to just one you know player but um yeah when i made a resonance with uh rhizomatics design flow plateau and uh so we made four spheres and uh the basically the same as the the mechanism of res like sound getting the music and with haptic but in the, the, the experience of resonance, the four people, even if the two people, you know, uh, become together spheres and the sound change and the visual effect change. And uh, this is a, yeah, it's mood. Oh, wow, like that. And the three people and the four people becoming together making a big resonance so this is a uh, musically this is a fun and uh visually this is it's getting a gorgeous effect and uh or oh, i got something uh, with that people so this is also the big big happiness and the fun so <clears throat> yeah yeah it's like yeah so unlimited architecture all the time <laughs> Mm. So, but this is a very deep uh, human instinct. You know, oh, I want to play by myself, but I want to connect. So this is a human being, I think. So the game has uh, many, many that kind of um, aspects and uh, how can we design that as experience? That's my opinion.
No, thank you. I think, yeah, that's, um, yeah, it's the, the challenge and the, the huge opportunity of designing for group, for a, a collective is, is a frontier, which, yeah, as you're saying, is something which more designers can move towards, um, which is, is really, really interesting. Um, I've, we are totally over time now. So thank you to everybody um, for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and apologies again for the sort of technical hiccup my side. Um, I'm going to reintroduce Sin now to, um, yeah, to talk a little bit about the future program as well. Um, thank you so much, Patrick and Mizuguchi san, for helming this opening iteration of Expanded Realities Conversations to talk about the exhibition making of virtual realms. It was a wonderfully visual and descriptive walkthrough of all the works that are born out of the imaginations and the beautiful collaborations between the game developers and the media design studios and how these works are bringing about um, very layered discussions about the development and the expression of video games in the current moment. Um, Mizuguchi san, we loved hearing about your upcoming projects at Enhance, including um, synesthesia based games that will make the most of the sound and haptic feedback possibilities of next generation consoles. This is keeping us and I think the gaming community very excited. Um, Patrick, we are also very much looking forward to how the Barbican's touring exhibition program will continue to evolve. Um, we wish you both and the amazing teams at Enhance and the Barbican our very best. Um, um, our sincere thanks to all of you as well who have been spending your time with us um, at Expanded Realities Conversations. We appreciate the lovely comments and the questions that you sent through during the live stream. Uh, we would also love to receive your feedback on today's program, which you can share with us through an online survey by scanning the QR code on the top right corner of this video. Um, just to share with everyone, our next talk um, in the series is live streaming next month on 13th July at 8 p.m. Singapore time. It looks at how creative directors and producers are working in blended reality spaces and creating new paradigms for how immersive storytelling can be experienced. The session will feature creative industry visionaries Robin McNicholas, who is co-founder and director of creative studio Marshmallow Laser Feast, and Sarah Ellis, who is head of digital development at Royal Shakespeare Company. Robin will share about the creative approach to Marshmallow Lisa Feast's works that explore sensory perspectives and themes of reality um, as seen in dream shaping for virtual realms, while Sarah will talk about how Royal Shakespeare Company is harnessing um, emerging technologies in their new projects to imagine the future of live performance. Also, our wonderful education team will be leading guided tours of the exhibition every Friday across the month of July. Um, we do hope you get a chance to visit virtual realms and join us in this upcoming programs if you're able to. You can stay up to date with everything that's happening at the museum and on our online content platform, Art Science at Home, via our website, Facebook page and YouTube channel. Um, please continue to stay safe and keep well in the meantime, and we hope to see all of you soon. Uh, thank you so much again, Patrick and Mizuguchi san. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you.